Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you my first eight weeks of pregnancy. Okay, so before we get started, um, if you are new here, I'd like to welcome you, welcome to my channel. Um, go ahead and click the subscribe button if watching pregnancy updates is something that interests you. Um, if you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. I am so sorry I've been MIA for the past few weeks. Um, the last video that was posted on my channel was our announcement that we were pregnant. So I w we announced to my parents and I announced to Anaya um, that I was pregnant and uh, then I haven't been around. So it's been, it's been about three weeks. Um, if you haven't seen that video, I'll link it up here in the cards and you can go check it out. Um, but pretty much right after that, um, pregnancy kind of kicked my butt. So um, I'm gonna go over kind of my symptoms through the two week wait, um, when I tested, when I got a positive, um, and then kind of how I felt the past couple weeks. I'll also be sharing some ultrasound pictures with you guys because we had an ultrasound done this week um, and we'll just kind of chat a little bit about that. I'm hoping to make these updates a little bit more regular, probably once a week, maybe once every two weeks, um, but we'll just, we'll see. Um, so I am going to be looking at my phone. I've got some notes here, excuse me, for the first um, little bit. So our uh, this pregnancy, um, if you're not familiar with my channel and you haven't watched any of my videos before, um, we this was our fourth IUI. So um, if you're not familiar with IUI, you can take a look back at some of our previous videos. But um, our IUI took place on June 19th. So we went in, um, that video, I'll link that up here as well. Um, basically we went in for our video, or for our um, ultrasound, like our base, or our uh, monitoring. Um, follicle scan and um, basically we're told that we missed it kind of we were not very confident about um, even having an IUI that day so um, I got a call back from my nurse basically they did a, a progesterone draw and determined that I was in the process of ovulating like right then so we went into the rushed into the office went in and had the IUI and again, um, I wasn't super confident about the IUI just because I felt like it was, it was too late. We had just caught it too late. Um, so I didn't really put a lot of stock in my symptoms because one, this wasn't my first rodeo. So I knew, um, that I could be symptom spotting possibly. And two, I didn't feel good about the IUI to begin with. So it didn't really make sense to me to keep track really. Um, but one day past IUI, so the day after the IUI, I had really bad heartburn. Um, and I don't really suffer from heartburn very often, so that was definitely, um, strange to me. Uh, I don't have anything for two days. Three days past IUI, I was super hungry. Um, just like eating everything. I just felt like I really couldn't get satisfied. Four days past IUI, um, I had terrible cramps. So it felt like um, if you've ever experienced ovulation pain, it felt like I was ovulating, which didn't make any sense because I had obviously already had the IUI. Um, it was localized. I can't remember what side it was on, um, but it was on one side and it was just really intense. I was kind of doubled over in pain. We were at a friend's house that day. <sighs> we were at a friend's house that day and I just remember being really uncomfortable the entire time. Um, six days past IUI, um, I noted that I was really tired, had heartburn again, and it felt like I had a tender uterus. So like if I palpated my abdomen, it just felt really like tender to the touch. Um, seven days past IUI, heartburn again. Eight days past IUI is when I started getting like sore breasts, um, had cramps, and I had a headache. And um, that takes us to nine days past IUI, which was June 28th. Um, and that morning I had a friend came over, I had a friend that came over and we were just kind of talking about, um, when to test and when my cycle was due and kind of what, what our plans were. Um, and I didn't really feel very good about it. I was thinking about, you know, traveling because it was almost 4th of July. So we were thinking like, how am I going to schedule these appointments when we're traveling? Um, but I knew I didn't want to test early. I didn't want to see another negative test. So if you're part of this, if you've ever um, been trying to get pregnant, every negative test, it feels like the end of the world. So I wasn't really interested in testing early. 
So I kind of visited with my friend for a while and um, after she left, I needed to grab a shower. So um, I went to go grab a shower and saw my box of pregnancy tests and said, you know what, whatever, I'm just gonna do it. It was the first response early result or whatever, the six day sooner test. Um, so I went ahead and took the test and then got in the shower. I didn't really wanna like wait around for it. So I got out of the shower and took a look at my test and I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this very well, probably not, but it looked like, like this. And there is um, a line in there. So um, I immediately called my friend and was freaking out and just like, is this positive, is this positive? Um, I'd never seen a positive pregnancy test in real life before, ever. Um, no friends of mine, I've, I've, I've just never seen one. So, um, she swore she saw a line, like there's definitely a line there. Um, we went to the store and got more tests tested um, and I saw another faint line, but the digital test came back negative. Anyway, the digital test came back negative. Um, so I kind of stashed that away and decided I wasn't gonna tell Anaya until I knew um, for sure, like without a shadow of a doubt, that the test was positive. So I, um, kind of stashed that test away and I'd taken it. It wasn't first thing in the morning. It was like mid morning, like almost noon by the time I took it. So I just wasn't sure. So I got up the next morning, um, when Anaya left for work and took another test and I got this. So I'm not sure if you can really see that, but there is definitely, definitely a second line. And I decided that um, at that point, like I was definitely pregnant and it was time to tell Anaya. So um, you can go back and watch, like I mentioned, I linked that up in the cards, um, but you can go back and watch that video of me telling her, I just made her a little card and told her and that was that. I mean, it was like, it was crazy. It's like, it's still really surreal to believe that I'm actually pregnant. It's like the wildest thing. So, um, when I found out I was pregnant, my cycle was still a few days away and I found out on a Thursday. So I was three weeks and one day pregnant when I found out, which is really early. Um, cause my weeks turn over on Wednesdays. So it, it's, it was kind of surreal, um, getting like seeing a positive pregnancy test. It was really strange. Um, I've actually got where I kept testing, um, all the way through the 30th this is before we told my parents so you can see um, these are this is the first test you know the first few that I took and then definitely by the 30th you can see the lines were getting darker so um, we told my parents and it was just like really strange um, just knowing that we were finally pregnant I called my doctor's office and before we left for the holiday I got my blood drawn um, my first beta was 88 and that was taken on, excuse me, I was three weeks and six days. And then when I went back, um, hold on. No, I was three weeks and five days and it was 88. And when I went back the following week, I was four weeks and six days and it was, um, 5,083. So we determined that my HCG was doubling beautifully. It was awesome. And my fertility, clinic um, wanted to see us at seven weeks for a seven week ultrasound. And I don't have that picture in front of me, but we went and it was really, really nice. We got to see the baby. We saw the heartbeat. We heard the heartbeat. Um, and that was, I mean, that was just really special being able to hear that. Um, the heartbeat or the heart rate was 147, which the doctor said was just phenomenal. And we went back again um, just this week for our eight week ultrasound. So when we went back at eight weeks, I do have those ultrasound pictures. So you can see that we've got a baby, a real baby. And um, we got the heartbeat or the heart rate rather. And the heart rate for this time was 163. So the, the doctor said it couldn't look any better. And we have officially graduated from fertility, which is just wild. I mean, it's like the weirdest thing to me because if you've ever been through infertility or you've ever seen a fertility specialist, um, they get a lot more done, I feel like, than you like your regular OB, which 
They're, that's what they're there for. That's why you go there. And we've been with our fertility clinic for close to nine months. And it just, it's strange to us that um, we don't have to go back. I mean, until we want to have more kids. So um, it was really, it was kind of a bittersweet moment when we went this week to, um, to do all of that. So in terms of like how I'm feeling the first eight weeks, um, the symptoms are just getting like more and more intense. They're not necessarily getting any worse. Um, I'm super, I get super motion sick. So just traveling in the car, even just going to the store makes me really, really nauseated. Um, anytime I don't have food on my stomach, I feel really nauseated, which I think is pretty normal. I have only get thrown up, um, three times this whole time. Um, once I just got, I was coughing and I think I just like triggered myself into throwing up. And then I got really sick, um, a few nights ago and then yesterday I, I um, had some vomiting during the day. Um, other than that, it's just pretty standard stuff. Like t I'm really tired. Um, but I'm having a hard time sleeping, frequent urination, just I'm drinking so much extra water. Plus you like your uterus, you know, it's, it's, um, pressing on my bladder. So I've got that going on. And, um, I mean, I don't really have any cravings, but I'm definitely having food aversions already. I can't even think about chicken breast without, without wanting to vomit. It just, something about chicken breast is just making me really sick right now. So, um, other than that, I mean, I feel really good. Um, HCG should be peaking within the next couple of weeks. So I should start to feel better soon, but it's just so wild to me. So, um, really quickly, I'm just going to share with you, uh, where we are at eight weeks. And I've got a few different apps that I use on my phone. Um, I don't really have one that I prefer necessarily over the other. I've got pregnancy plus what to expect the bump, um, baby center and Ovia pregnancy. I've got a lot. Um, just, I mean, I really, they all kind of give a little bit different information. So, um, I'm going to go into, to Ovia pregnancy and see if we can't, um, get some information here. So eight weeks pregnant, um, it says baby Harris is moving around like a little dancer, even though you can't feel it. Your baby bulge might start protruding at this time as your appetite increases to match baby Harris's. The placenta is also picking up its hormone production, giving yours a break. You'll start to see fewer mood swings soon. How's baby Harris? Baby Harris is in the last few days of embryohood, which mostly means that the brand new teeny tiny internal organs developing under its see-through skin are almost ready to start functioning on their own. That pesky tail is finally celebrating its last hurrah and pretty soon it will disappear completely. Baby Harris's webbed fingers and toes are poking out from little limbs that are growing longer every day and facial features are becoming more prominent as lips, nose, and eyelids are looking increasingly human-like around now. Your strawberry sized bundle of joy is also moving around like crazy, although you certainly cannot feel it. Baby Harris's head, still tiny compared to yours, now makes up half of their total body weight. But don't worry, all the famous babies have big heads. And what I really like about the Ovia app um, is it does show like the size, the relative size um, of baby's hand. So you can see that little yellow dot in the middle and the same thing with baby's feet. So there's that little, I don't know if you can see that, I won't focus. The little yellow dot in the middle. And then it gives me some uh, equivalents. So baby this week is the size of a pygmy seahorse or a um, half Lego brick, a two by two Lego brick. And a wild strawberry. Um, it also, in some of my other apps, equates baby to the size of a raspberry this week. So. Um, we will see in the upcoming weeks kind of how everything goes. Um, let me know if there's something specific you guys want me to talk about, like specific symptoms maybe, or like if you, um, have a checklist or something that you think you want me to go over. Um, just leave that down in the comments if you have any questions. Um, and if you want to see these videos more frequently than once every two weeks, let me know. Um, I'll probably just post them once every two weeks. Um, or if I have anything interesting to add. Um, other than that, just like I said, leave me anything down in the comments. I'm so sorry for being MIA. I hope this video filled you in on where I've been. Um, and I hope you come back in two weeks to see my 10 week pregnancy update. Um, I'll show you guys the, the bulge. It's not even a bump <laughs> right now cause it's just bloating, but I'll show that to you guys. And then, um, that'll be all. So let's take a look at the bump or the bulge rather. 
So here we go. And from the front, a lot of this is just bloating. So that's that. All right. Um, again, if you guys have any questions or anything, just leave it in the comments below and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye guys.